and they actually asked would emailing companies directly help you with with kind of networking and and getting a job and I suppose the short answer to that is yes but I think it has to be a bit more targeted than that and it has to be that you probably are a bit more thoughtful about who you want to contact in the companies that you're interested in applying to um, and I think it all really begins with reaching out to people either through the network you've already got, asking um, people if they can introduce you to someone, or just through LinkedIn, being able to carry out a search for people in particular companies or with a particular job position and reaching out to them and start a conversation with them. Um, the same way if you, you, you met someone naturally in person that you would maybe ask what did they do for a living, you know, this is um, what you can start to do on LinkedIn. And you can really then use that as a stepping stone to talk about particular jobs and applications and look for their support and um, kind of recommendations actually to um, HR or to business managers for, for you if a, role, a particular role comes up that you're interested in. I don't know, Amita, what your thoughts are on, on that about emailing um, companies. Yeah, so I agree, Lisa. I think target it, you know, very often if you send an email, a general email saying I'm interested, you'll get quite a standard reply. So saying, you know, we have a graduate program or this is this is, you know, this is the person to contact. So as Lisa was saying, the more that you can target your um, email, that the better it will be. Look for as exactly as Lisa said, you know, look for people on LinkedIn, look for job titles. So very often any any person involved in the graduate side so the graduate manager graduate coordinators um even you know people in hr if there's a particular business area that you've already identified that you'd like to go into um try and connect with somebody who actually works in that in that department in that in that area and then as lisa said start up a conversation they may move they may kind of say no go and talk to hr or go and talk to our graduate person which again is fine at least you've started started the connection um, but don't, what I wouldn't say is just don't send a sort of standard blanket, I'd like to join the company, kind of that kind of thing, because it won't, it won't get you anywhere, you'll just get a standard reply. Um, so do a bit of research and focus the email, um, you know, maybe mention, have a look on what, what the company's actually doing, are they in the news, have they done anything recently that's quite interesting, have any new people joined, uh, that's always quite a nice way to start a conversation. Um, and at least you'll stand out from 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 the rest that you've actually done a bit of research. So yeah, emails do help, but um, target it as Lisa was saying. Yeah, and I do think also that you know not just looking at what the company's doing, but look at what the individuals are doing as well on LinkedIn. If you are going to be reaching out to connect with someone, what kind of things are they posting? Uh, um, you know. Is there something that you can comment on and then relate your, your email to them back to that? So say, oh, I saw your post on this and I thought it would be worthwhile connecting with you. Um, you know, or similarly, when you've got connections, if you see, say you see an article um, or, you know, a paper that someone else has written and you share that, start to tag your contacts in. Um, you know, and just even say, you know, what do you think about this? You only need to put a couple of lines of, you know, I, I really enjoyed this aspect or this made me think about this particular subject. And then you can yeah, tag other people in and hopefully then they'll start to comment. But if they, they see you starting to talk about things that are of interest to them and their company, um, it, it positions you as someone who also has an interest in that industry sector or, or, or field, particular field. Um, and also they start to see you as whatever that job role is. So it could be that they start to see you as a business analyst or they start to see you as an engineer or, you know, uh, somebody working in finance, whatever it is that your expertise might be it's good to really start building that up but it kind of becomes part of your brand almost that, that you're being seen as this person so yeah 
So I don't know, um, actually, for everyone that's on the call, I don't know what your actual experience of networking has been so far. Um, you know, have you networked a lot? Have you not really done anything because you're not sure where to start? Um, you know, are you somewhere in between? Um, it would be good. You can either, um, you know, put, put in the chat or there's actually not that many of us. Feel free to take yourself off mute and, and let us know what, what your experience is so far. Hi, Hi. In terms of my experience, it's very limited, um, but I do I do have a LinkedIn profile, and I have started to connect with people that are relevant to my interest, which is sort of digital marketing. Um, and I have sort of started to write. I've written a couple of articles on LinkedIn, um, but it'd be interesting to know. Um, you said they're about sort of tagging uh, connections in. in. I, I imagine would that be still applicable to your articles that you've written, as much as this content that you've that you've read from elsewhere? Yeah, of course. I mean, if you think. Um, uh, you know, I know I've done it, I'm sure Amita has as well, like, you know, when you write something and it's, you know, it's of particular relevance to certain people, then yeah, tag them in because although people are on your feed, like you, they're your connection, they don't automatically see everything that you post. So the easiest way to get them to see that is actually to tag them in because then they'll get a notification and then they will look at it. Um, you know, and they might only view it, they might not comment, they might not actually even, you know, do a like or a, you know, celebration or whatever the, the different options are. But, you know, some of this is also about how how often your, your posts are getting viewed um, and not just like having the interaction as well. So if you tag them in, they are more likely to, to see it and access it than they would if they're just on a connection or just someone that, that's following you or you're following them. So yeah, I think that's quite an important one. Amita, anything else you wanted to add there? Yeah, I think, I think also we mentioned it before, but it's always useful to um, start to identify industry trends. So that's another thing kind of that we were saying earlier, kind of if you're, if you're looking at a particular, um, you know, digital marketing, um, organization or what's going on in the industry what can you start talking about in some of the even if it's a post as Lisa was saying it doesn't have to be all original ideas you can say uh, just read this or these are the top three trends that I've seen or read about or heard about in your particular industry that again that just you're what, what you're trying to do I guess is stand out from the crowd a little bit um, and and get people to think oh you know James or Lulu you know they're great at sort of telling me about trends and people to be honest in the world of work people are so busy that if they know that I'm gonna you know I'm gonna talk to you know I'm gonna follow James's posts because he always tells me what the what the industry trends are that's a really good way of starting to kind of get get known um, and yeah as Lisa was saying you know tag people uh, the other thing that I've done is send so if I've written an article, I will then send it as a private message to people that I think will be interested. And that's quite useful. So don't just post it because, as I said, as Lisa said, there's so many. We all know this. You get so much information these days that you don't you can't follow it all the time. But if you get a private message in LinkedIn saying, you know, just wrote this article, it might be relevant, might not. It's fine. Um, just read it. You know, thought, thought it might be of interest to you. Um, that's led to. Uh, some of my posts getting getting more viewers um and again it's that targeted approach you haven't just written it and put it out on linkedin but you've targeted people that you think might be interested yeah yeah so what about everyone else what's your experience been so far of networking they'd like to they'd like to put themselves out there a bit or even write it in the chat as i said I 
going to say, well, whilst people are sort of typing away or, or putting questions in, you know, networking isn't easy for anybody. Um, you know, when we, you know, Lisa and I will say, you know, at AIG, we used to have various networking events. And even though you've probably been training all day and talking to people all day, you always have to like get, um, you know, almost take a deep breath before you go into another networking um, meeting or opportunity or something. So it's not easy, even if you've been working for sort of over 20 years, as Lisa and I have. Um, it's still something, it, you know, not very many people are very comfortable going into a room where they don't know people or, you know, and that's pre-COVID, obviously. But, um, you know, just it, it does take a bit of energy and a bit of kind of focus, but keep doing it because the more you do it, the, the easier it will be. Uh, the first two or three times will just be, oh, my God, who am I going to talk to? And I'm standing in a corner and everyone looks like they're talking to each other. That's normal. Every single person in that room is feeling that. So, you know, hopefully when things open up and you start networking in person at events, um, don't get put off by the fear. Just just kind of just do it. Just go for it and do it and it'll be fine. Yeah. And I, I, I totally agree with that. And I think actually, although it seems a bit more daunting to be doing networking virtually, because it's sometimes like, what is the etiquette? When am I allowed to speak? When am I not? Actually, a lot of what Amita's just described is how people feel when they're networking in real life. It, it still applies to um, when when you're doing it online, when you're doing this virtually as well. So I think it's a really good idea to prepare, you know, think about what it is you actually want to get out of each event you want to go to. You know, is there particular people you want to try and, you know, get a question to? Um, is it that you just want to raise your profile more um, at a particular event if it's, you know, focusing on a particular aspect of recruitment or is it that you really want to um, be able to, you know, get across that you are interested in a particular, you know, focus within the industry sector that you're applying to, that you, you are trying to build up your knowledge and awareness around about that, but you want people to be aware of that. So it's, it's quite good to prepare, think about the questions you want to ask, think about what you want to get out of it, even if it's just two or three things. Um, and that can even be just to challenge yourself to actually speak out um, or speak to one new person, you know, at these events. Mm -hmm. And I know um, Lulu's also said that she's not networked much yet. Um, but she's considered starting an, a LinkedIn account, so she's um, just at that point, um, and she's only got experience in networking in terms of social media accounts, and I think that's very, very common, um, especially for um, people of this age group, you know, that, that social media has become, you know, a platform in which people do engage on so much that, you know, actually the opportunity to perhaps be involved in networking and other types of event maybe hasn't come up yet for you um especially in the last kind of obviously nine months or so with covid um being so prominent and having put some of some some companies a bit um on, on the kind of back foot they're kind of obviously having to change how they're doing things so you'll probably start to see a lot of kind of events now coming on virtually that previously would have been face to face so rather than them being cancelled as they were maybe kind of April May June time they're now starting to revert to, to having these on online platforms um so yeah I don't know Amita if you've got anything else you want to add on yeah, to I mean that. I guess the other thing I would say is is um as Lisa said, we're in strange times with, with the virus and everything, you know, everyone's in lockdown, so we're not having as many opportunities to do the the face-to-face -face networking. But if you look again, I would encourage everybody, if you haven't got a LinkedIn profile, num step one, do it. Um, set yourself a target, say by the 1st of December, I'm going to have a LinkedIn, you know, profile up and that gives you, what, 10 days or something, like you know, to, to, to really think about what you want to put up. Um, have a look at other people, see what see what you like, see what you don't like. Um, so set yourself a target. The other thing I would say is there's a lot of um, companies that are doing virtual networking right now. Um, they talk about a particular topic. 
Um, I'm thinking for the stuff that we do, kind of the, the, the Institute of Leadership Management. I mean, there's so many different institutes that, that do lots and lots of different um, videos, webinars. That's a great way of learning, but also it's a great way of networking because usually there's, a, there's an opportunity to ask a question um, and they'll usually say, you know, they'll say who you are, your name, and then ask the question, even if it's in chat. So that's a great way of raising your profile. It's a great way of building a network. Um, so go out there, you know, definitely get on LinkedIn, have a search for any kind of free webinars. They're all free these days, which is fantastic. Um, and get yourself signed up for something that you're interested in um, or want to find out more about or a particular industry. If you're thinking about an industry that you want to go into, get yourself on a webinar and ask a question. And that's the best way of, of, uh, of kind of um, practicing your networking skills so that when we hopefully come out of lockdown, you'll be a little bit more advanced in terms of you've done some of this online. Um, so definitely, definitely try that route. Yeah, I think that's some, some good advice. And um, Vibhav has, has also said that he's, he's in the same position. He's not networked much either. And although he's had um, a LinkedIn profile for a long time, he's quite hesitant about what he's actually going to see in person. And that is so common, as Amita mentioned earlier. Um, um, Vibhav's um, not got his uh, camera on and he's, he's not speaking because he's, he's saying his internet connection is not that great. Everyone will get a copy of this uh, recording af afterwards as well so that you will have this to kind of reflect back on so if things are kind of a bit unstable for you you'll still um, hopefully be able to hear that better on the recording um, at a later date. I think, I think as well a lot of people just automatically think that networking has to be something really formal, really professional. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of activities out there that happen that you could go along to, to to start building your skills. It could be, you know, that you've got a hobby or an interest that you are um, wanting to know something a bit more about or connect in with one or two people on. And, you know, being able to do that it, it helps you to kind of understand right how do you engage with people and you know these are the types of questions I want to ask this is what I want to tell people about me you know so it, it's good to get some of that practice in, in formal settings as well you know and you can even practice with groups of people at university, um, you know, amongst your friends, you know, if you've got people that are the, the same point, um, you know, of a job search as you, then if you should get together and just kind of think through, well, what are some of the things that, that you might want to talk about that might make it easier and make you more confident about doing it if you've had a bit of practice, because it is hard it is hard to put yourself out there and um and you you have at the back of the mind or your mind you know what everyone else is seeing and did you know that and you know you're starting to think and compare yourself to other people um so i would say everyone's thinking the same about everyone else everyone's like wow that person brought up a really good point i would never have looked at it that way you know that's okay everybody has their own different way of of looking things and the whole point of networking is that you've learned something then as well when you've been there but essentially that individual might have learned something from you or from something someone else so it's not that there's this one person that's like the, the total guru of networking and they know absolutely everything about any subject and they can go in a room and shine that's not what it's about it's about understanding what you want to get out of the situation um, it's about learning from other people. It's about building those relationships and, um, you know, then being able to use them at a later stage to connect in with people to yeah, help with your job search um, and, and, yeah, to help them introduce you to other people. Um, you know, so it's asking for those introductions. Um, and if you've got a LinkedIn profile and you know someone, um, like say you were connected with me, you could go on and you could go through all of my connections and you could say, oh, actually, that's someone that in Lisa's network that I would be quite interested in, in getting introduced to. And then you could just drop me a message and say, Lisa, can you introduce me to this person? 
you know so that might take a bit of time on your part to do that but it's all there it's all available to you um you know so spending that time could be quite valuable because that's a connection that you wouldn't have maybe had otherwise that could then connect you in with someone else in an organization that you want to work with so it's looking at these you know degrees of separation almost um and being able to use that to your advantage just to share a story i mean it does happen because um i worked um somebody had applied for a job um and they knew that that i'd worked at uh, it was it was disney actually and but um the, the hr director had moved on to a new company and somebody i'd worked with before said oh i noticed that you know this person um I'm going for a job at that place. You know, have you got any tips? What are they like to work with kind of thing? And then I replied back to him to say, yeah, they're great. They're fantastic. I think you two will get on. And what I then did was drop an email to the HR director saying, oh, by the way, you know, this person's been in contact with me and kind of basically um, they're both very good and I knew they'd be a great match. So, I, you know, it, very often people, people are very, um, you know, they'll take the time. If you reach out, people will take the time to do things. So it, and in the, in the end, that person did get the job. Um, so even in exper experienced people, they use networking all the time. Uh, you know, just to, it's not something that's just, just for grad, that's harder for graduates and everything else. It's everyone does it throughout the whole career. So if you learn skills now, you'll use them till all the way through your career. Um, and I was just thinking as Lisa was talking, I think I've had about sort of 10 jobs over sort of 20 odd years. Um, and uh, about half of them have come through my network. So only half have I actually applied for um, an actual role that was advertised. Half of them have come through the network. So yeah, use, use your networks. They're so powerful. Once you get good at it and, and just practice, once you get good at it, um, you know, it's, it's so powerful. And, and I guess the other final thing I'd say is, is, you know, sometimes it takes a bit of guts to kind of make the first move. Um, but just do it, just feel the fear and do it anyway, that kind of phrase that everyone talks about, but it's absolutely true. Um, you know, I was I was out of work pre, you know, this is an interim role that I'm doing, but I, I took a year off in 2019 and then tried to look for work in 2020. And as you can imagine, it was crazy because um, I was looking in sort of February time, which was just as coronavirus was hitting. Um, and, and I had to keep reminding myself to just park my ego and just ask because you never know where your next job is going to come from. And you and for you guys, you never know where your first job is going to come from. So kind of, uh, you know, part of me was thinking, oh, no, I don't want anyone to think I'm, you know, looking for work and I've been out of work. Forget that. At the end of the day, I wanted a job. Um, and I just emailed my network on LinkedIn and just constantly, I think about three times, I sort of said, look, I'm looking for work, just to remind you, this is what I'm looking for. If you see anything, let me know. Very, very high level. It doesn't have to be too intense. And Lisa will know that we have a WhatsApp group of friends who used to work together. And I think uh, at least twice in the last seven or eight months, I reminded these guys that, listen, just to remind you, I am looking. So if you, if you see anything, let me know. Um, so it's just reminders because you know, you know, people are busy all the time. And unless you keep reminding them, they never, the worst they can say is Amita's really eager. So what? I am. Um, but, you know, if, 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 they, if you don't approach people, if you don't ask, people won't know that you're looking. Um, or they'll think, oh, maybe she's quite relaxed about it. So don't ever feel you're going to be a pain. You won't be. The more you do, the better it will be. Yeah. Yeah. Completely agree with that. And I think uh, something I've said to people for uh, for a number of years and uh, when they talk about their careers and their next step I always say to them well the more people that know that that's what you are interested in that that's the type of job that you want that that's the industry sector that you want to work in then the more likely it is it's going to happen because it is as Anita said the more people that you've got thinking of that are aware of if something comes up they might connect the dots and just say yeah that is something that Catherine wants to do or Asim wants to do uh, and they'll just forward it on because I know I forward jobs that I see on to people all the time um, and so um, it, it's really really important that you start to think about what is it that you want from your career and you start talking about it and you start presenting yourself in that way because the more that you do that then 
the more likely, as I said, it's going to happen because you'll have other people there advocating for you, recommending things to you or recommending you to other people um, and making those introductions without you even having to ask for them. You know, so it is um, a real um, opportunity to use your networks um, cleverly. Um, and Asim's also said that he's had some experience with LinkedIn and he's been sharing a few posts about events that he's participated in. Um, but he's wanting to know a bit more about what kind of content you should share in LinkedIn in terms of the quality um, and also how you should approach recruiters on LinkedIn. Um, so I think um, obviously there's quite a few questions in there that Asim's asked but um, when it comes to the content that you, you should share in, in LinkedIn and the quality of that I mean there's two different ways of doing it obviously there is um, you can take a lot of different research and then you can make up your own kind of um, post or article around about that and share that and you can see I've gathered this data from a lot of different places you know that's one way of doing it that is t quite time consuming so I would say that you're probably not going to do that every day and uh, that might be something you do once a month or once every kind of six weeks or whatever you might you might do one kind of big post but again you're you've got a lot going on you know you're you're studying you might have a part-time job you you've got a life to get on with you know I know we're in lockdown right now but um you know you've still got other activities that you'll be doing you've got family um you've got friends that you'll see and on top of that then to also think about your job search and your next uh you know kind of move in your career well that that takes up quite a bit of time so it's about getting clever, I think, about how you use um, articles um, that you might want to share. And so look for articles that come from rep reputable sources. So it could be that it's, um, you know, the institution for your um the, the professional body for your uh, industry sector you know that there's a lot of different white papers published there's information on different projects um you know what they're doing to lobby the government and so on um and again there are there are other kinds of journals and things like that 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 there, these are seen to be reputable sources so if you are reading some of these um, and and putting them across and they've been thoroughly researched by other people then that goes to help show that that's the type of quality of um yeah material that you're engaging with and it's also that that then your opinion is formed based on something that has been researched rather than you know this is just someone else's opinion that's on on linkedin that, that, that you're then sharing so i think if you can use something that comes from a re reputable source that that's good um i don't know Amita, what your thoughts are on that. i mean i'm quite a visual person and and i'm um i like things to be simple so to be really honest um i will i do this all the time i will file white papers i i very rarely go back and look at them to be really honest um but what does stick in my mind is if there's a slide. So I'll give you an example. I saw something yesterday or a couple of days ago around uh, we're looking at leadership and how they should leaders should communicate. And there's various white papers that I filed in my email box. But what stuck stuck in my brain was I saw a slide. Um, I think it was from London Business School or one of the business schools, which kind of had three steps of three things that leaders need to think about in terms of in times of crisis. And it's already stuck in my head and I and and so if you can as Lisa was saying if you can maybe make a visual or you know depending on everyone's going to have a different learning style um, but if there's something that you think is really important highlight it in the post or you know just say I've read this white paper I've attached it but the two or three things that I that resonate with me or that make a difference that I think you know are really valuable for me when I was reading is this this and this and for those of you lots of people are quite visual and they retain information visually. So if you can make um, a slide, um, and James, you know, you're a digital marketer. And so, you know, it's about the whole marketing thing. If you can be creative, colorful, something, you know, that that will grab people's attention. Um, some people are very kind of, they love listening to things. So if you can kind of, you know, do a, 
uh, uh, you know, a sort of a message or something, an audio message, that's always, that's also something that's quite different. So, you know, think about, think about how you like taking information. You know, for some of you, it may be the white paper is fantastic and you like, you love, you love reading and seeing where the research comes from. Um, but think about, think about how you like information presented to you, because very probably there will be lots of people who share your style. Um, and as I said, for me, if, if it's a simple slide, that, that for me will stand out. Um, the other thing that, um, building on what Lisa was saying, is you've all been at university and college recently, so you have had access to so many different ideas and so many different research people and so-and-so said this and this theory and that people like me will forget what we've learned, you know, many, many, many years ago. So, you know, you can always say, look, you know, just what, again, something that I found really interesting and whatever course you, you're doing, whether it's, you know, finance or business studies or uh, marketing, um, remind people of some of the things that you really, really liked at uni, um, some of the things that the theories or something that things people said, because we'll, we'll forget, you know, I haven't been at university since, God, 1994, so a long time. Um, so if you can remind me of, you know, do you remember this leadership theory? I'll be like, yeah, of course, how could I, how could I have forgotten that? Um, because you're, you're near it, and I'm sure there's lots of wonderful things that have come out that, that we don't know about, um, that you've been taught about recently in the last couple of years. So um, there's lots of strengths, I think, that, that new graduates, we, we won't necessarily realise that you have. Um, mm -hmm. And you really do. Like, we haven't been in education for a while. Um, and so, you know, think about, think about what you can bring to busy people. Um, and you do have an edge. You do have an edge on, a, amongst other people. So, you know, use, use your strengths. Yeah. And I do think that, you know, when it comes to using reputable, source, reputable sources, um, that's one thing. But actually, it's so refreshing when someone just kind of does give their thoughts and opinions, you know, and how something's resonated with them or how you think you can, they can use a certain model or process or, you know, tips that they might have because it, it, it's... And, and things that you might see from your perspective would be different from me, but actually getting the um, the kind of over, the oversight of so many different perspectives, that's where LinkedIn is actually so valuable because you get access to advice and tips and, and thoughts from people that you just think, wow, that is actually so helpful. I would never have thought about that like that and people take that and and they they go and they put it into practice or they tweak it slightly for themselves and um, so don't be afraid to you know put forward your your own thoughts and opinions and perspectives on things because it it's nice for um, future employers and for your network to see, well, this is how this person's thinking. This is you starting to connect the dots on certain things. This is you starting to think about, this is something I've learned, but actually this is how you can put it into practice. You know, so it, there's so much that you can do there. So I think if you're going to be putting forward something that is like, you know, um, about your industry sector or so on it's good to use those reputable sources but it's also good to break the mold and just be be yourself um, and I think that's being yourself is one of the most important things you can remember when you're networking um because you know Sims also asked for um some tips on you know what what is it that you can like you know do in terms of networking how can you approach uh, recruiters um or how do you start with people on linkedin the, the most important thing is to be yourself don't try to be something you're not because it's hard to keep that up and in the end up you'll end up in a job that you don't want to do with people you don't want to work with and you're not you, your work is a big part of your your day-to-day -day life so you want to be able to enjoy it and engage with people that are on the same wavelength as you you want to do something that you enjoy for the most part of your day um so definitely be yourself um but i think the top tips for me anyway are definitely to really target who it is that you want to network with and 
the events that are available to you because you'll have lots of events coming in, you know, events like this or maybe through the university, through committees or um, societies that you're part of, you know, in your personal life. And it's really about which of these are actually going to be of benefit to me? What is it that I'm going to get out of attending these events and really think that through? And give yourself, like, obviously it will depend on the type of um, event that you're going to, but give yourself, like, some questions that you want to ask when you're there or to certain people. Um, you know, make sure that you are being seen. So I know that sometimes there is issues with um, internet connections and um, audio and that sometimes you're not always in a room on your own so you might not want to have your sound or your video on but certainly if you're going to be um, networking on a, a virtual basis it's really important to have your camera on because it makes you more memorable and um, people can see how engaged you are with what's going on um, and it, it might be that actually you go along and there's like a webinar first and then it, the networking's after that. So it will only be maybe for the last half hour or 45 minutes that you need to have your camera on. But try to make sure that you do that. Um, so I think they are really important things. So targeting, preparation, um, you know, making sure that you're visible when you're actually at the event and also following up so um you know the people who are at that event you know is is there any way that you can connect with them uh once you've gone uh moved on from the event itself you know is that through linkedin or is it on twitter is it on email you know how can you get in touch with those people um afterwards and a lot of events um share the attendee list you know so you'll get that attendee list afterwards so you can connect in with people that perhaps you didn't get the chance to speak to or you didn't get the chance to see as much as you wanted to um you know or just to have in your wider network so they they're the kind of tips that I, I would have for you when it comes to networking um I don't know Amita if you've got any others yeah, um, just, yeah. All, all the things Lisa has said but I think what I would say is is set yourself a goal so um, I'm quite kind of goal orientated. So, so I would say, you know, just say, okay, in the next two weeks. So for those of you, I'd say that haven't got a LinkedIn profile, 1st of December, get your, or whatever, whatever the date you, you know, you put your own dates, I'm just saying my dates. Um, but, you know, just say, okay, in the next two weeks, I'm gonna uh, get the really good LinkedIn profile up on, up on the um, LinkedIn. Then I think, you know, just say before Christmas, I'm gonna contact five, which is not difficult, five recruiters. Um, because Asim was asking about how do we approach recruiters. So for your industry, whichever industry you're interested in, um, go into LinkedIn and identify from job title. So you can do search on, on company and job title. Um, identify five recruiters that you want to link, link in with. Um, and then when you, when you actually link in on LinkedIn, I'm sure you will know this already, but for those of you that don't, it says um, connect, you can put a message in or you can you could, don't have to put a message in. So I would just say, you know, kind of I'm really interested in joining this company. Also, as Lisa was saying, target. So don't just send it to a random person, send it to somebody who works in graduate recruitment or in HR or in a particular team that you're looking to join or a particular area that you're looking to join. So, you know, give yourself goals that you're gonna, you know, whether it's 10 or five, whatever's, reasonable you know not 50 because that's not going to happen but something that's reasonable um and set yourself a goal and, and and do it work towards it because i think networking is so big and linkedin is once you start there's like thousands and thousands probably of contacts and you can get a bit lost so you know kind of just as you have at college with with kind of um assignments and exams and all the rest of it so set yourself little targets every month um, and that way it will become easier. You'll become better at it as you become more confident. Um, and so just, yeah, just keep, just keep going with it. The other thing I would say as well is, is don't give up. So just sharing, I just shared with you that I was looking for work in 2020. Um, you know, just to give you a bit of 
uh, real, realism. You know, I, I've got 25 years work experience. I still filled out 40 different application forms. Um, and, you know, from, Jack, from, from February to when I got my job in October. So, you know, don't, uh, don't give up. Um, and, and, and it's really, I've just been there myself in the last few months, so I know how draining it is. Um, but just keep, keep doing it. Keep, keep going because something will connect, somebody will connect and, you, and, and it will work for you. Um, so, you know, just keep going with it. And, and the other thing I would share is that, you know, as I was looking for work this year, you know, looking at the news doesn't help because every, every week there's another company that's making 500 people redundant or 3000, but just park that, take it on board, keep going, keep going with your search because you never know where, where your job's gonna come from. Um, family, friends, as Lisa was saying, you know, any, anywhere, you know, family, friends, uni contacts, college contacts, um, social contacts, uh, just chatting to somebody randomly. We don't do that anymore with coronavirus, but anyway, um, you know, school connections. So the, the, the more people that know what kind of job you're looking for, the better it will be. Um, and then the final thing I'd say is, you know, the job that I've got now is an interim role. I was looking for a permanent position, but you know, right now it's quite a difficult environment. So be flexible in terms of, you know, the kind of jobs you're looking for because it might lead to something that's that's fantastic, and and you don't know you don't know it until you start. So, you know, just just uh, just keep your options open and keep going with it. Don't give up. Yeah, I think that's some really good advice, and I think, um, you know, it can be easy to just look at. The current social economic climate and think oh my goodness this is going to be so difficult but actually when when you look at um what employ graduate employers are saying a large portion 40 percent of those graduate employers are are still recruiting as they would every year um you know and another 25 percent of those are still going to recruit but just slightly smaller numbers and the, the rest were actually undecided. So it wasn't that they were definitely not going to recruit. So there are still graduate opportunities there. There are still, um, you know, kind of uh, entry level roles that are, are happening in organisations that you can apply for. Um, I would say that, yeah, definitely using your networks to tap into as much of that as possible is going to help. Um, I think one thing that, that James has asked is, um, you know, what, what is the difference between kind of preparing for a, an event that might be in person compared to an event that's um, online or virtual? And um, I think in terms of what you, you essentially want to get out of it and how you target them is probably not much different. But actually when you're there in terms of how they are operating, you know, and what's happening is quite it's quite different. So you might need to just set your expectations differently for each one. And, um, you know, when you go somewhere and you're in person, you can obviously see quite easily, you know, where there are as someone that you might want to talk to and you can go and you can kind of insert yourself into a group of people and you can then start to um you know have a conversation um and the one thing i would say about preparing for when you're doing this in real life is when you get into that conversation sometimes it can be difficult to get out again to then go and speak to someone else and a lot of people end up stuck they're kind of like I'm with this same group of people all night and that's not what I wanted I only wanted to talk to this one person now they've moved on from the group and I can't move on um so it is about getting practiced at being able to say actually there's someone else that I really wanted to speak to I'm just going to go over there and it was lovely to meet you but I'm going to move on now uh, even you know I, I actually need to step to the toilet and then when you come back you don't go back to that same group so there are different ways uh, of kind of extracting yourself from a conversation that is it's good to be aware of because as conversations start and people then start talking it can be difficult to even just say listen sorry I'm going to move on and it's a bit weird if you just step and walk away <laughs> so you want to try and make sure that you've got um that you've got that kind of planned and how you want to move on from one conversation to another 
I think when you're doing it virtually, it's a bit it's a bit more difficult because um, you kind of have to be aware of the etiquette on how people want questions to be asked or how um, how you can do that, whether it's writing in the chat box, whether it is signifying that you've, you're putting your hand up using whatever emoji it is. Um, you know, so be aware of that. And, and also there could be, you know, five or six people in the queue ahead of you before you're going to get to ask, ask your question. Um, and even if your question sounds quite similar to something someone else has asked, still ask it, just maybe kind of tweak it slightly so that you might get a different kind of information or tag it on, just say, I know, I know that such and such already asked a similar question to this, but actually what I wanted to know was this particular point, you know, so that um, it, it shows that you're also listening to what everyone else is saying as well. Um, and I think the other thing is if there's someone because sometimes you go to these events and it's things like they put you into smaller breakout rooms and you get to speak with someone, um, whether it's a panel member or whether it is just as a group, you know, you're getting to speak to two or three other people. If there's people that you really, really want to speak to, just let the organiser know beforehand or um, when, as soon as you get on, because you can message everyone in the whole the whole group or you can just message certain people. So you can message the host and just say, I'd really appreciate if I could get put in a room with this person and this person, you know, over the course of the, the event, you know, and it might not be the first group you go into, but the organisers will try to accommodate that as much as they can. Um, so... I would say what their kind of differences and obviously the other difference is when you're um, at an event and people do need to go and get a drink or they're having something to eat or they're nipping to the toilet, then that's one thing you can kind of see that and it's not so noticeable when they're away. But that's still stuff that still needs to happen when you're online. So don't be afraid to go, I'm just going to, I'm just nipping to get a drink or I'm just nipping to the loo or whatever it might be you want to use as your excuse and then go away, um, you know, because obviously then it just means that there is a space where you 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 would be on your video. Um, but don't be afraid to do that because there's nothing worse than if you're distracted or you've got a dry throat or you're just like watching everybody else drinking and you've not got a drink. And so just, yeah, try to make it as normal as possible. So they are kind of things that I would say um, in terms of additional preparation over, over what we've already discussed um, already that is kind of different between the two, the two areas. But definitely um, the preparation and the follow-up are, are kind of key. Um, I don't know, Amita, if you've got anything else. What to ask. And I guess um, certainly in person, I think I think can be harder. Um, you know, like it's difficult for everybody. Like I don't, I haven't met anyone who loves networking events. Um, you know, even when when we have networking events um, in companies that we've worked with, you know, if you talk to some of the CEOs or the very senior managers, even they think, even they find it a bit difficult. Um, so, so I would say when in person, I mean, Lisa's absolutely right. The preparation is exactly the same for both. Um, I think the exit line, absolutely. I'm, I'm probably not very good at that. I tend to get stuck. Um, so that's a good reminder for me. I'm going to have a couple of lines prepared. Um, but yeah, be, be, it happens. You can get stuck for the whole evening and actually not talk to the people that you want to talk to. So, you know, think about it as what's your objective for the evening? You know, don't go in there as just, I'm just going to go and have a drink or whatever. You know, just I'm going to go and meet certain people and I'm, I'm going to try and meet as many people as possible. So go in with an objective. The other thing I would say in person is um, very often people want to kind of network or talk to the presenter or something. Um, and, and they usually, there ends up being like a group of people around that person trying to, waiting to go and talk to them. Um, and I would say, you know, that can get quite competitive um, about who, who talks to them and how quickly they talk to them. And I would just say, you know, just hold back until the space opens up, because if you're just part of a crowd, then it becomes very difficult for that person to talk to everybody. So kind of be aware of what's happening in the room. Um, be aware of, you know, if you're if you've targeted certain people, when have they have when have they got fewer people around them? When's a good opportunity to go and talk to them? Um, you know, think about think about how you're going to manage it. Um, and then, as Lisa said, be be mindful of how you're going to exit as well. And I think, you know, as, as Lisa was saying, you know, saying it's lovely to meet you, 
um, I've just got to go and talk to a couple of other people is, is still quite polite um, and it's a nice way of, to exit. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Think about how, think about what question you're going to ask them, how you're going to insert yourself into the group because it can feel very awkward just hanging around until they're free. Um, so just think about how you're going to do that and, and, and also try and get comfortable with the awkwardness because that's part of the networking. Everybody's awkward. Um, I still get awkward. So just kind of go with the awkwardness um, and, and you'll, you'll be okay. The more practice, the more, the, pra the more you do, the better you'll get at it. Yeah, because it, it's like anything else. You've been stretched outside your comfort zone. Uh, these are, are people you've never spoken to before. Uh, you know, it's an environment you've not been in. You're not quite sure, you know, how how things are going to work uh, until you get there you know so so it's not familiar to you so it's going to challenge you um but as Anita said the more you 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 do that the more kind of you get comfortable with being uncomfortable <laughs> um and I, I do think that it's it's nice to go along to these things with friends with with people from your your uh, class at uni whatever it might be but don't just go because of that reason don't just go because everyone else is going make sure it's because you are going to get something out of it because your time is precious and also when you are there with people especially this is more so when you're in in real life um you know don't just stick with the people that you know make sure that you can you know move around and and speak to other people because you know you're not getting the value out of attending if you only speak to the people that you know um so yeah i'm very conscious of time um already i am conscious that um we're kind of at the end of the um, the hour that we had um, for uh, the Q and A session, I do know that we've got a couple of questions that we've not quite got to yet. Um, but I also wanted to just let you know a couple of things. Um, we we do obviously have um, this Q and A is part of a series, and there is a Q and A session that happens every month, and we've got different panel members. So Amita's obviously um, been supporting this evening, and we've got panel members from um, different companies um, coming along to the that have preceded this, and then then after this, and so you will get um, information on any jobs that the these companies are recruiting for that you know. A, a relevant post for people of, of your level so any student opportunities any graduate opportunities any kind of entry-level roles and um, we'll make sure that that you get um information of those they they'll be part of the newsletter that comes out um after this event and also um you know as as other jobs get added on um as from the whole series you will also get access to them as well um we also do have um, the Graduate Ambitions uh, Coaching Programme and so um, we do have a, a voucher that you can use. I'm just going to tap in the code for that in the chat so that you can see it. It's um, NOV for November and Q, then QE and that is the, the code that you can use um, I've only just sent that to Lulu, wait till I send it to everyone, sorry. Uh, okay, so um, so yeah, you can um, obviously use that. There's also the link on um, there from Judith uh, with access to just the free tools and resources. It is something that we're building out. We've got some on there, but by the end of the year, there will be um, additional resources on there that really kind of talk you through each stage of the process um, for uh, the the kind of recruitment, job search, uh, selection process and so on. So there'll be some free resources there that you can also make use of. Um, so yeah, feel free to go on there and check it out every now and again and see what's new. Um, 
we also do have um, some time, Amita and I, and, and I think also Judith, who's, who's here helping uh, as part of my team to, to kind of coordinate this evening. And um, we do have some time for just some actual networking for anyone who wants to stay on and do that. You can ask some more questions. You can get a bit of practice about how to network. Um, and, and so on. I think uh, for me, it would be um, really useful to know a bit more about, you know, what, what you are all studying. And, you know, if there is anyone that we can connect you with, then it means that we can uh, maybe suggest that for, for you guys uh, just now. Um, obviously, there is the option for you guys to connect with us anyway on LinkedIn, uh, which would be lovely to, to have you do that. And again, yeah, then you've got access to our networks and um, you can feel free to message or tag us and in, in things as, as time goes on. Um, but yeah, so I, I wanted to say thank you to you all for, for coming along and asking your questions for the questions we've not got to if you're not staying on for uh, networking then we will also put them on LinkedIn and, and we'll put some responses so that you will um, be able to see them on there and um, yeah, huge thank you also to Amita for coming on and giving such good advice and insights um, and to Judith for her support so Thank you very much.